All right. Hey, everybody. Um, so far, we're a little low on the viewers, so it's pretty early, but uh, this is our weekly developer hangout. Uh, we have this every week at 7 o'clock p.m. Eastern. Uh, I think it's 4 o'clock p.m. Mountain Time, 5 for, it's like, it's like way late at night uh, in GMT. But uh, basically, we, we get together every week, and we talk about what we did, uh, what we're going to be working on the next week, and we talk a little about, about the game, um, current events, and upcoming events. And uh, we also show some of the juicy bits of what we're working on, so stick around, and uh, we'll also take questions at the very end uh, in case people have some. Um, to start with, your typical host, uh, Michael Flux Chang, is not with us this week. Um, he's pretty busy, so uh, I'm going to be taking things over just from here, and we're going to just go ahead and get things started and start with uh, CRC Jax, uh, who does animation and rigging, and he's going to talk a little bit about what he did this week and what he's working on next week. So go ahead, CRC. All right, so um, I've been working on uh, kind of the base animations for Pure, and um, this is um, the walk I finished this week um, here. So now we have all, all the directions for walking, so we can get that in game. Also, um, running with you know your sword, um, purse dance. Um, those animations were finished this week, and I did some rig work this week. Um, had to swap out the uh, geometry on pure and um, make a few fixes. Um, and I also made some passes over um, some existing, uh, the turning animations, which we, we did get in uh, last patch or the patch before. And my list of, of tasks is basically all, all animations for pure, the idle animations, um, the, uh, the, what, the animations when you get, um, when you parry, so kind of the step back. Um, block responses and stuff like that. So that's what I did this week, and that's what I will be doing um, for next week. Awesome. And for those who don't know, those tiny animations that he's working on just go a lot, a long, long way in bringing the character to life. And uh, some of the new work that he's putting in is going to be going to be sweet. It's going to be the best. So we'll try and get that in maybe in the next couple of patches or so. But um, and next we got Fug. Um, he is doing level design. He does uh, he does level art. So he's going to talk a little bit about what he did this past week as well. Go Hi, good evening. Um, this week um, I changed the lighting on both of the winters, free winter and dual winter, in the waterfall arena because some players were giving some feedback that it was quite dark. Um, so it shouldn't. To be too obvious that there's more light in there, but um, it does light the characters up now. Um, I also fixed in free winter a lot of the rocks were non-solid, um, so I've now clipped those so that you you can't hide in the rocks. Um, also on free monastery, uh, I've um, sealed off these staircases um, and have clipped those off as well. Um, this week I also worked a bit on uh, the tutorial map, um, just some feedback that uh, UC has given us. Um, mainly the biggest thing was having the bot reset, um, ha having the player reset, sorry, when the bot um, is attacking you. Uh, and also this week um, I noticed today by uh, gave a comment on workshop on how to have tintable color on the swords so I decided to just make one example of one of our swords in game and I've given it a color tinting on, on the glow parts um, just so the workshop people can maybe when, when the next build gets pushed uh, can have a look at the files and see how it's done and also this week, uh, back to the storefront, um, I finally uh, UV'd it and just got a quick temporary texture on. Um, and I have uh, some errors on it at the moment that I need Fedio to give me a hand with. And next week, I will carry on with the sign, um, with the shop. And I've got some models that need to go into the shop window. And that's me. Cool. Awesome. I uh, look forward to uh, more of those sign stuff. Uh, let's see. Next, we got Burning Fighter. Uh, he also does level art and level design. So he's going to talk about what um, he did. Hello. 
Hello, hi, hello. Um, so this week I haven't worked on a lot of stuff, but I did make progress on a new storefront. I mean, a restaurant for FFA community. I've also been working on some of um, stuff I I won't be showing right now. The, it's basically going to be sort of um, source for maker stuff. I've talked about it before. It's, it's still not ready for public, but yeah, I've, I've worked on it a bit too, and that's it for me. Yeah. Did you say what you were going to be working on next week? Uh, um, I'll, I'll be finishing off the um, the SFM thing, also working some more on this storefront, I mean restaurant, and yeah. Cool, and I'm sure Termi's going to be very excited for you to get that stuff done. Shops, everyone loves yeah. shops. <laughs> shops. Uh, so next is Bio. Bio does programming for Blade Symphony, and he's like this. Just he's an amazingly magical. Just yeah, he does some of the amazing work that makes things happen. So uh, he's going to tell us what he did this week. Okay, so the first thing I did was adding an option to the audio menu to enable and disable the announcer. And by default, it's enabled right now. And I added that because some people didn't like it. So now I have the option to turn it off. And um, besides that, I have been working on improving the controller support in Blade Symphony. And I fixed uh, all of the bugs that I've known about so far. So for example, when you are attacking now and rotating the camera, it won't override the view angles of the character anymore, like it did before. It was kind of a cheat. And I made it possible to execute directional attacks and moves with the joystick now. And um, I've also implemented some menu controls. So when you use uh, the start button, you can now also disable the menu, menu again instead of just being locked to it. And I added the controller controls to the customization screen. So you can change everything on the screen here uh, just by using the controller. And that's basically what I've been working on. And next week, I will probably do some more stuff on the tutorial. Uh, but I really need to have Flux take a look at the script uh, and the design document for the tutorial, because I think he still didn't do that yet. And uh, I will probably also improve the controller support a bit more if anyone finds issues with it. Um, yeah, that's basically it. Awesome. Um, I don't know if, if people watching can thoroughly appreciate the controller support thing, but it's a lot of work, and he's been doing, uh, he's been killing it, and I think, like, having controller support, I'm, I know I'm personally very excited about I think it's going to be fantastic, so I'm, I'm looking forward to, uh, uh, you know, more work on that. I'm going to give it a try tonight myself, and I think, uh, yeah, I'm excited about it. I'm excited. Yeah, but I, I can't awesome. take all the credit because uh, Twin did the stuff before that. So, for example, he made a default config that I could already use and everything. Yeah, yeah, I, yeah. I know he spent a lot of work on it for sure, and I think and yeah. I, I almost say everyone appreciates that that you've been, you know, working so hard to, uh, uh, you know, really get out all the bugs. Finalize it, get it done. Yeah, people are going to be pretty excited about that. So, um, moving on. Uh, That's been coming up a lot. Like yeah, and the control. tutorial stuff, like our tutorial has really been coming um, coming along, so you've been doing a, a great job with that too, so I'm looking forward to more changes, and I think, you know, I, I think for the most part, if we can get the community, just maybe if you guys out there will be willing to give more feedback on the tutorial, we'd love to hear it. Um, there's a lot of, you know, like... Get your friends to play it. If you've got friends that haven't played Blade Symphony yet, like the some of the best tutorials... I mean, if you guys have been playing Blade Symphony for the last like six months or whatever, your your feedback, while valuable, isn't as valuable, like because the tutorial is made for new players. Um, if you can if you can get a friend to play it, um, just sit them in front and like you can be a real QA guy. You, like take notes and ask them about how they felt about different parts of it afterwards. Post it on the forum. I know it's a lot of work, but it helps us so much. Definitely, yeah. There's, um, there's, we're doing a lot of tutorial work as we can, um, which we'll talk about later. But for the most part, right now we're in a fifty, per, like we're fifty percent off on Steam right now because of their autumn sale. Uh, so tell your friends, like, get them to, to, you know, to buy or buy them a copy or something. But for the most part, you know, uh, 
the tutorial is really out there to help new players. We've been help having a lot of new players within the last couple of last month or two, so we want to make sure that there's as much in helpful information out there for them. Um, we should so. also mention Humble. If people have got a leaning towards uh, the Humble guys for whatever reason, are we on sale there or no? No. no. So if you want to pay a little bit more, but you also want to throw a little bit of it towards charity, uh, you can also check out Humble, um, like the Humble store. So yeah. Um, yeah, we're on sale on Steam, but not on Humble. Uh, so for the most part, yeah, uh, the tutorial. If you guys got any feedback out there um, or questions, I mean, you can you can throw them in the comments. So uh, looking forward to the more work by you, Bio. Uh, moving on, we're gonna hold on, um, hold on. Someone had a question um, in regards to CRC. I think it was. Um, is there any news on Pure's taunting and sheathing? Animations. Um, we have the uh, the taunts are, are ready. They're they're done. Um, I'm not sure why they're not in yet. Uh, maybe Flux knows why they aren't in it yet. Um, the the ones that we have the taunts. We didn't have the flourishes. Is that what the so? Maybe that's what they meant. maybe that's what they're talking about. Yeah, yeah. taunts are done. Um, flourishes are not. Okay. Yeah. Cool. And you've got sheathing on the way at the moment. Was that what you said? Uh, I don't have that on my list, but I mean, it should be a simple thing. So, I mean, I got a long, long list, but, but you know, <laughs> <laughs> that's what the ladies tell me, or something. I don't know. Anyway, um, should wow. we want to? <laughs> wow. So, other than that, uh, I don't. I haven't seen any other questions just yet. Uh, but we'll move on to Twin. Twin does program. Well, Twin does like everything. He, uh, he's like level design, level art. Uh, he does a lot of programming it, and he's been killing it, do, being a, an everything man man on Dystopia. So he's going to give us an update on Dystopia 1.4 and what he's been up to with that. Hello. Um, so this week I finally figured out how to build Sound Cache on, one, on SDK 2013, thanks to the help of the uh, HL Coder Skype chat, because it's completely different than like every other Source Engine version. Um, but it's really important to have sound cache. Otherwise, the first time you boot up a game, a source game, it'll take forever to build sound cache. And people might think the game crashed, and if you like click on it, the Windows box comes up, and you close program and all that. So it's really bad to not have it built. That can so. cause hitching on that as well, right? Like in games um, sometimes. It, it, it generates less optimized sound cache as well, so it's going to be less performance mm. than if you build them like legit style. So it's, it's good to have it built regardless. But the biggest problem, I think, is that Someone can, someone can just load up the game and be like, oh, this is not working. And then, you know, you click on it, it goes white, like Windows 7 style, and then you yeah. close it, and it's like, oh, well, the game's just crashing on me. But it's really right. building sound cache. And if you don't let it build the whole way, then it restarts. So it's just a <laughs> shit fest. It's nice. Um, you, aside from that, I did a whole bunch of stuff. Well, I was going to do uh, some of the stuff I worked on this week. Um, I worked on enhancing tax scan. Uh, you know, tax scan had a really short range before. Tax scan's an implant dystopia that lets you see... We've got this common theme in Dystopia where implants basically let you cheat if, like, win other games. Tax scan's one of the ones that let you see through walls, and normally, um, like this spot right here, if I was behind this wall, I hit tax scan, and he pops up. But it had a really short range, and it was kind of causing problems. To, on... Hey, if you're trying to screen share, I don't think you're... Oh, really? Yeah, sorry. <laughs> <laughs> We're right. looking at your, your little avatar thing. I if you want to see my avatar pulse, this is my avatar pulse. All right, well, Bam. I did a fucking lot of shit this week, so... <laughs> We're going to take your word for it, but... One fucking week I'm prepared, god damn it. <laughs> I, I don't, is, is the screen share just In like... general as well, there was, a, there was a huge change log as well that Twin was rolling out, like, the guy has been a machine this week. I was reading over it, and it's like, there are so many parts of that code that he's touched this week, it's not funny. Another, another one of the implants of Dystopia is a sound wave triangulator, which is a really cool one. And uh, what it does is it makes like a visualizer on your screen and shows people in, within range of you, right? And uh, it'll show like footsteps on the floor and like weapon shots. But no one's used it for a long time. And I'm like, what do I do with this implant to get people to use it? And then I, I found out that it basically was like the shittiest implant ever. And the only thing it did was footsteps and hit scan sounds for like, uh, you know, like rifles. So I got it working for all projectile weapons. I got it working for the Tesla, smart locks. All explosions show up on it. Grenades flying through the air show up on it. Grenade bounces. Which dropping, like, like Stealth cortex and legs. Meta plant tack. Dude, isn't that fu That's like amazing that anybody was using SWT in Dystopia. I know. Like, like, 
grenade bounces not showing up was like the most silly one. Like, how could uh, <laughs> like my brain was just programmed to think that that worked, but it didn't. Like, there was there was no code for it ever. It's just all client side stuff, which is only for subset sounds. Which like that's some. I mean, for those who don't play Dystopia, and for those, I mean, for who do actually, like for everybody listening, that's some of the awesome changes that are coming up in Dystopia. Like we've been. It's been very slow going on, on for 1.4, but like it's it's going to be worth it. These are changes that should have been in, but these are also changes that just make the game immensely better, and it's going to be fantastic. Twin's been killing it. Honestly. I also I also redesigned the the basilisk because basilisk was kind of this like oddball weapon, kind of conflicting with the minigun. Uh, so now it's basically UT uh, flat cannon, <laughs> like legit through and through flat cannon. Um, you don't have anything that you can like show, or is it you're just screen well, share? Let me let me try again real quick. Let's see. I was about to say if you could retry it, because I mean, <clears throat> right, I'm trying again. Let me know if it works. Or not. Right now, most most people who are watching the hangout are just kind of like, "Hey, we like your your twin cannon avatar. We get it." Well, usually I I am not prepared because I'm like managing other stuff behind the scenes, yeah. hangout stuff. But this week I was actually prepared, and I guess it's not working. So fuck it. Um, <laughs> Everybody, um, that's puny human flying by the seat of our pants. Well, honestly, hangouts, please. Like, yeah, I'm just yeah. sharing them for myself here. Yeah, that's hangouts. I don't know if anyone else can see it. Cool. Um, Do you want to move forward? Yeah. Go for it. Yeah. Uh, so next. Oh wait, uh, fuck, twin. What are you doing next week? Oh yeah. Oh, I don't know. Releasing fucking dystopia, I guess. <laughs> <laughs> Is that an announcement? <laughs> I emailed Valve today, so hopefully they'll get back to me on Monday or something. Cool, man. Yeah. That's fucking amazing. Um, well, good. Everyone's going to be excited about that. Mm-hmm. Uh, so next is uh, Paul Ingrinerd. Uh, he's going to be... He's our, he's our sound guy. Uh, he does like a lot of the voice stuff. He, he's going to be telling us what he worked on this week. Hey, everybody. Uh, so instead of... I don't have uh, anything awesome to show you because um, it just looks like um, a waveform which is cool. But uh, I'll tell you what I did. So I got a lot of feedback on the announcer and on the phalanx sounds that were implemented last week. So uh, this week, I, uh, uh, this last week, I, I made a bunch of changes to phalanx um, based on feedback internally within the team and a couple of people that uh, uh, made some comments uh, in forums on Steam, on the Steam community. Uh, so those those are already in, and I'm about to put in some changes to the announcer based on, again, comments uh, that are echoing from within the team and from uh, what a few people have said outside um, uh, part of the community. Uh, I also started planning audio for the community map, uh, some environmental audio for that. Um, so I'm just sort of jo- <laughs> brainstorming at this stage. Uh, but I have some good ideas that I want to talk to some of the other developers about and see if uh, we're on the same page. So, Paul, if we need, um, for that. If we need some time or whatever um, for us to like run around in there or something, I'm happy to do it. I'm, dude, I'm fairly confident that you'll come up with awesome shit without input, but uh, if you want it, I'm happy to give it. Yeah, yeah, no, I think I'd, I, I'm always, I always, always want to get maximum input before I implement things because um, I just think it's more efficient. Um, if I, because I, I know what I think is awesome, and I'll go ahead and do that. But uh, if the rest of the team is like, dude, we had this other thing in mind, I'd rather hear that before I do all the work. You know, it's just more no, fair enough. Uh, so yeah, I'll definitely. We should spend some time together doing that. Mm-hmm. Um, what else? Uh, so announcer feedback changes coming this week. Um, Knight should have new sounds implemented as well uh, this coming week, and. Um, yeah, that's that's what I'm working on. Awesome, that's good news. Sweet. I think everyone's uh, pretty excited about hearing the night sounds as well. Um, They're so cool. cool. They're actually my favorite. <laughs> nice. Out of the recording session we did a few weeks ago, they're really cool. I want to say, like on the whole, the the sound, like the sounds that have been done so far, have been pretty good. They just like everything. They just need tweaks. So I don't. It's not like you know you did like I did a round of sounds on Dystopia back in the day, before the final sounds. Were terrible. Yeah, they were terrible. <laughs> like, let's, I'm just I mean, gonna, like, okay. Yeah, like they were really bad. But like we had we didn't have a, a studio or anything, so we just had to go forward. Like we these sounds that are coming out, they're, they're great, and I think with more tweaks they'll be perfect. So you've been you doing you've been doing some great work, man. 
So uh, next we got Rob. He's a uh, he's a programmer uh, on Blade Symphony, and uh, he's going to tell us what he's been working on this week. Hey, so yeah, as uh, as I think was stated before, I'm almost through with the process of moving, probably today. So I'm a little bit slow uh, the last week or two, but uh, what I have done is. Uh, what I've got on my screen at least. This is my research I've been doing for just at least getting something to share with the rest of the team for uh, what I'm working on with my uh, uh, diagram, my f uh, flow diagram for uh, the, the, the bot. Um, and there's there's a couple of cool options. Um, I was toying around with a few of them. This one is just a, one I just made right now. But uh, it, I'm, I'm writing it on paper just for ease of my, my brain. But... Um, yeah, when, once I get you know those organized a little bit better, you know, hopefully coming up these next few days here, I'll be uh, throwing it all onto a, do a digital document and then sharing it with everybody just to look at. So um, yeah, so that's that's going on pretty cool. Uh, but yeah, other than that, I, I said it early earlier. My my game's being stupid right now, so I can't bring it up. But um, I, I've uh, been adding more things along the lines of, to the bot's functionality that I was doing earlier. Uh, in in things such as like he can switch stances now, he's able to like roll and dodge and block and stuff. So you know, just add, slowly adding little little tidbits of uh, functionality into his uh, toolbox that he can then use this whole brain that I'm gonna create for him to access. Uh, so that's what I've that's what I've been doing. So I guess yeah, my, my points moving forward is I want to get this design or this the, the uh, flowchart done. Uh, I'm hoping sometime by the you know Wednesday mid of this week, and then throw it up online for everybody else uh, as long as 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 well as discuss it with people because I want to I want to get it uh, solidified before I start putting in logic into the code and and mm -hmm. all that kind of stuff. What's the uh, what's the next bot feature that you have you might? Uh, um, I I don't have the listing, um, but I was just been going down the line um, when I was talking with Bio and uh, Flux a while back. We had just kind of listed off uh, uh, pretty much what's in the AI already, mm -hmm. um, uh, and just going one by one. Uh, I think so. Like on my mind right now, I can think is uh, things pertaining to like detecting when uh, the enemy is doing something. Uh, I've already had a bowing. Um, I'm not sure. Did sit get put in the game? Mm, yeah, I, th I think mm. it, well, I think the animations are there, but they're not. It's not put in the okay. game. There's no wide in yet. Yeah. But yeah, along those lines, yeah, most of the core functionalities are there. Switching stances, uh, that kind of stuff. The the biggest things I need to do is make the brain on paper, as well as add the mm -hmm. linking functionalities, like detection functionalities for what is my enemy doing, what. What tier attack am I in? What stance am I in? That kind of stuff, so I can make a decision based on okay. you know seeing those. Cool, cool. I think we're excited about that, man. I think more bot work is. I mean, there's a there's a long way to go for sure, mm -hmm. but I mean, I think everyone's going to be excited by a really good bot getting in the game. Uh, it'll cool. Be really good for the tutorial, and I think it'll be good for those who kind of to satiate a little bit of that single player need. Um, of course. No, yeah. yeah, just screw around. Right. Yeah, if they want to start up like a, a local server or something and just sort of screw around, we might eventually, after it's it's kind of like worked on more, we may even sort of work on a GUI or something to create a bot for people or, you know, bot-based games or something like that. You know, it, it, yeah. we've, got, we've got a lot of it's down the road. possibilities there once the bot Oh, is, yeah. Yeah, we've got a long way to go before the bot's done. So that's, I, I, think, I think everyone's pretty excited about the work that you're doing. Cool. Okay. So next is Termi. Termi is our level designer, level artist, extraordinaire, uh, hard at work at probably everything. So he's going to tell you what he's been working on this week. Um, I'll, I'll kind of blaze through this. So uh, this week, more community stuff predominantly. Um, I, I got the department store in, uh, which is in like the back wall of community. Um, there was a lot of screwing around. Can you, can you yeah, yeah? Can you show it a little closer because it's it's a it's probably just a, a low resolution for people on uh, yeah. on the stream, but it's a storefront that has a, a fence. It's like a it's closed, so like it has a roller a, shutter. Yeah, okay. gotcha. Um, so it's it's got like kind of the the fake depth thing we've been doing everywhere to kind of make it look like there's stuff going on. You can't really see it that well on low res, but 
Yeah, there's that. Um, I, I did like six new dress skins. So we're basically reusing the mannequins from other areas in the maps, but with different skins and stuff, so we can kind of reuse those assets. Um, this this department store takes up multiple levels, so we've got like different stuff on each level. So you've got like fashion up top, and there's like homewares on this level. Um, and then down here, there's like uh, there's luggage on this side. Um, did all the assets for for all of this stuff, which is like the the actual wall textures and the signs and the fake depth stuff and the glorified, um, boxes. glorified boxes, which is pretty much what they all. Are. <laughs> Um, yeah, it's the best looking uh, luggage, man. I have to give you props for that. So, well, it, it didn't turn out too bad. Like, um, there's there's two types. We're only using one so far. So this is like, this is the other one that we've got, um, and this is the one that we have in game. I actually made these renders so we could use them. Like, you can actually see in game that we're using one of the renders for the poster behind it. Um, so yeah, we did these like, uh, well, I did these high res renders so I could use them basically for poster art. Um, to be used in game. Mm -hmm. um, the the other thing that I was up to is um, there's there's something that's like in all of these kind of locations which we don't have yet, which is basically directories. You know, the whole like here's everything and here's where you are type stuff. So it's it's kind of hard to turn a location like this into something that works uh, on a on a flat map. So I actually dragged the majority of the map into a modeling program did clean up on it so it was simple 2D, um, and then baked out the results and made a um, directory for the map. So that was the other thing that I did. Um, that's that's pretty much it. So it was like luggage, department stores. Um, I did a little bit more clean up on the map, which I've basically been doing as I see stuff that needs to be done, and got this directory thing finished as well. I've got to get the model done for it, but apart from that, we're going all right, I think. If you were to ever, like, if I were to ever need to have a mall constructed, uh, <laughs> would be the first guy I was gonna say, yeah, that directory is pretty awesome. Yeah, that's pretty sweet. Cause, like, you immediately know, like, oh, C eight is the art gallery. Like, that's pretty cool. I'd, yeah. Well, the, you take the Gruen transfer into account. I practically well, dude, look at the layout of it. I think I did. Like, you're gonna be struck by some sort of awe and and disorientation when you look at the layout of this place. <laughs> Mm -hmm. So, um, it, it, I think it works. I don't know. Like, um, it'll be animated and it'll be like plastered on certain locations, like near the near the elevator decks and all that. And um, I'm gonna make it so there's like a a pulsing like you are here thing for people when they're looking at it. Cool. So they should be able to actually work out their location legitimately mm. by using the directory rather than it just being a set piece. I mean, the only thing that's better than a set piece, as far as I'm concerned, is a functional one. So. So can yeah. I actually find the toilets from here? Cause, uh, yeah, dude. Yeah. There's toilets here. Yeah, There's but toilets. are those toilets actually in-game? Uh, well, they're kind of in-game. Like, they're... That, oh, shit, that was the other thing that I did. So, like, that's that's one of the locations for the toilets. Um, what I did was... I'll, I'll pull it up really quickly. Um, you made toilets! Something. No, I don't know. Um, I, made, I made toilet screens for the... Um, for the... Uh, where is it's it? A little like, icon uh, for the uh, the directory for the male and female thing. Uh, no, no, no. Like for the like, see these screens up here that are above the two doors, the two very serious looking doors, as Flux pointed out last week. Um, these two screens, there's basically like a male and female um, thing for. I've got it here. I'll just pull it up. It'll then take a sec. Um, so yeah, that was that was pretty much it. Like we've, I've got to redo the um, uh, some other related assets for it, but. I think it's I think it's coming along. Here you go. Uh, sign, sign, sign. Where is it? It'll only take a sec, he said. It'll only be a minute. No problem. It will only take a sec. Here we go. Right, so that's when that's the screen. You meant, uh, you meant just for you? Pretty much, yeah. <laughs> so these are the different screens that are in game at the moment. There's the male toilets one. There's the female toilets one. That's the other thing that I did this week. Look at that so, screens! Yay! So that was that was fun. I my week was essentially recompiling other models to add additional functionality. Awesome. So, yeah. Awesome. Uh, next week I will be um, fixing some of the minor bugs. Like we've got like a missing asset in this window. Um, I'm also going to be putting together another store. 
Um, we've got one, two. So if you if you're keeping track at home, we've got uh, four, five, six stores left. Uh, seven actually. There's one down here as well. Um, Burning's working on one. Fug's working on one. I'm going to start working on another one, which should leave us with about uh, three. No, four. There'll be four left after that. So, so we're getting one. really close. Me so far? Yeah. How many stores have you done? Um, I did the Carrie Burton, the Verdant, the Fifty Lashes, uh, the John Pertwee, uh, Gaunt, and that's it so far. The five? Five of them, yeah. And then... Oh, and and now, so six. So, and and there's there's how many in-game so far? One, two. In-game? One, two, three, four, five, six. Six. So you've done five out of the six stores, is what you're telling me. Uh, yeah. You knew this, dude. Yeah, uh, hey, Fug, Burning Fighter, Video. No, dude, they're working on stuff. Oh, well, no, 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 Video, Video actually got three of them done, like he's got the fast food area done. Oh, yeah, that's right, he got the, okay, awesome, yeah, yeah, that was a good looking area, so too. So Video, Video just, like, jumped in and, like, bombed three fucking stores into the place, so yeah, he's, he's doing yeah. alright. Wait, show it again. Burning's... It, Sure, uh, but... I think we shot last week. That was it last week. Oh, okay. So we, yeah, we, yeah, that's right. We already shot it. Yeah, it's yeah. it's a pretty fantastic. You got like Dumpling Hut and the Worst Cafe and mm -hmm. um, Big Macs, which should maybe make Dystopia people a little bit happy. It's oh shit! Cool. No, seven, dude, seven, because I did the Handy Kiosk as well. Oh my god! All right, I, I don't. <laughs> I'm not trying to toot your own horn or anything, but I'm just trying to get get fug. I'm in trying to keep track, better. dude. No, 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 dude. They're getting there. They're getting there. Um, <laughs> Burning's yeah. working on. Burning's working on the store that'll go here, which is basically like a like a nice restaurant rather than fast food stuff. Sweet. Um, and and Fug's working on something that will go around here. Um, he's talked about it a little bit. It's basically a I think it's turned into a um, uh, electronic store. So yeah. Cool. Cool. So we're um, we're quickly speeding towards base model completion, but at the same time we've been doing polish pass stuff at the same time, so that's fun. Mm. Okay. So. Yeah. Cool. Uh, well, I think that's it for the, share, the show and tell portion. Uh, I don't think we have anything else to show unless anybody has thought about anything uh, since they've gone. But um, just as a reminder, you guys can like post questions on the uh, uh, on the YouTube page and the, on the YouTube comments if you want to ask questions for us. We'll answer them uh, when we you know see them or before the end. Uh, you can throw them up on there. Also, as, I, as we said earlier, uh, Blade Symphony is 50% off on the Steam website right now. Uh, so during their Steam Autumn sale, which I I don't know, I don't know when, when it ends, or probably another couple of days or something like that. It'll say on their website. But it's 50% off. Tell your mom, tell your dog, tell your friends. Buy a copy for your friend, maybe. Don't know. Hide your kids, hide your wife. Hide your kids, hide your wife. But we're trying to get uh, a lot of people playing right now so we can get a lot of feedback on the tutorial, the new sounds. A lot of good stuff is going in right now, so it would definitely help to uh, to get people kind of at a lower price if you you know if, if thing or your budget's tight right now. It sort of helps uh, helps us out for sure, but it helps out the game even more. So um, oh, and another reminder, uh, we've got the Blade Symphony first winter tournament coming up. Uh, so we had put out a news post uh, earlier in the in the month about the Blade Symphony Winter Tournament, which was that uh, people could sign up essentially, and they were given. I, I think they were they were given people to sort of like hunt and duel, and that would gain them points uh, as entrance into the tournament. So there should be. I, I want to say it's forty eight people, right? Isn't it forty eight people in the tournament? I think it's. Uh, I think it's 32, dude. I think it's 32. Okay, 32. Okay. So, so essentially, 32 people. But we're going to be streaming um, the new turn or the the winter tournament, and uh, it's going to go on on our Twitch page. So if you're not a, a Twitch follower, uh, I would definitely check it out. It's I want to say it's Twitch.tv slash. Uh, I think it's just P Human. I want to say, oh, P Human Games. Um, but we're going to be streaming on December 1st at 9 a.m. Pacific, which uh, that should be about 12 o'clock uh, noon uh, Eastern Standard United States time. That's 5 p.m. GMT. We're going to be streaming on Twitch. Uh, registration's already closed. It was closed on, on November 11th, but be sure to check it out. 
you know, uh, jump on there. And if you if you happen to miss it, then jump on the Twitch TV page and uh, you know check out the recorded session. We're really excited about this tournament that's coming up. I think it's going to be a great one. We've learned a lot of uh, lessons with the last couple of tournaments, so we're definitely hoping that uh, you know things are going to be pretty sweet with this one. So if you, I don't think there's any more questions. I think. I think we're good, man. Yeah, I think we're good. Cool. Right. Yeah, we'll wrap it up for sure. Uh, but we'll see you next time, next week. Uh, it's uh, 7 p.m. Eastern, 4 p.m. Pacific Standard Time every week. Uh, hangouts right here. So, thanks for watching, guys. And remember, keep slashing away. <laughs> that's that's uh, our trademark. Wow. <laughs> nope. <laughs> That's that was so bad. That was so bad. <laughs> well, I, I don't know. Turn off the feed. You're terrible. Yeah, we don't have a bit of the uh, like motto thing yet. Oh so. man. All right, guys. I'll see you later. <laughs> Bye. Slash your mom. Keep on slashing. <laughs>